The Muckleshoot Gold Cup is something that is brand new to, um, to this area. The, the Emerald Downs Racetrack, which is, um, of course, owned by the Muckleshoot Tribe. You know, uh, the Muckleshoot Tribe, um, when they took over or the transition of Emerald Downs, they wanted to bring Indian Relay back. And, you know, a, a big thank you goes out to the Muckleshoot Tribe. Indian Relay Racing is a competitive sport that the Native Americans do. Um, what it is is a race. It's uh, usually three horse horses, and they go, um, they start with a mounted start. They'll go one time around the track and come in, and there's uh, a rider that starts, well, on the horse, obviously, and there's a holder. He's, he's holding your first exchange horse, and there's your back holder. That is your third horse, typically, on there, but we're not doing it here, but typically that's the way it, it is run. Uh, the reason we're doing four horses here is because of mile track. But there's another guy, he's called the mugger. And so after the mounted horse has, does one lap around the racetrack, the mugger's job is to grab the, grab the horse. And so when the horses are coming in, probably 20, 25 miles an hour, and the, the rider's rating them, the mugger's job is, is to, to, to jump in front of the horse and grab him because if your horse gets loose, you know, that is an automatic disqualification. So the mugger's job is really important too, plus the holders, because you have the whole grandstand behind you that is, is, is feeling all the adrenaline and cheering their best team on and all the excitement. So the rider, his, his, he's thinking about getting on the next horse. The holder, the first holder, is trying to steady that horse for his position. The riders practice this all the time, and so, with, but without the crowd. So you factor in the crowd, and that's when the, the first holder's job is really important to hold that horse, plus the mugger catching that horse. The rider comes in, both feet have to touch the ground. He's unassisted. If any, if the, any of the teammates touch him, it is um, automatic disqualification. So he comes down and he jumps off, off both feet touch the ground and he gets on the horse. And some of them, the, the more they practice is, is um, a, smooth, um, a smooth transition. They'll just come down and pop just like they don't even touch the ground and ride onto their horses and off for the next race. Grizzly Mount, and that's Kerry Carden team. Your rider is Oliver Pagodas, as he is gonna make the move and the transition, and there he goes from Grizzly Mountain, the Colville Nation. That is the Columbia River Basin, as Oliver Pagodas is off and running. Big Gunny Express in fourth on that third exchange. In the meantime, here comes Grizzly Mountain. You know, we have some great riders in Indian Relay, you know, from um, Tyler Pe Peasley from OMAC Express. Um, Picani Express, there's um, Narcissus Rivas and um, 
from Umatella, you know, we got Clyde Jefferson, some of the up and coming riders uh, that I would say in their prime, those are like the veterans riders that we mentioned, that I just mentioned. The, the up and coming stars now are like um, Chaz Racine for the Carlson Relay. Um, we got um, Cross Guns out of um, Star School. He, Isaiah Crossguns, he, he is a young, very young man, just getting started, 18 years of old, old I think, but um, he is a really good up-and-coming rider. My name is Isaiah Crossguns, and I'm from Star School, Montana. Yeah, I'm the rider. I've been doing it since I was young. Yeah. I used to ride saddle, and I didn't really like it because it gave me burns, and I just tried bareback, and I liked it. It takes, takes a lot of courage and it's commitment. Yeah. Pretty committed to riding. I know, it's pretty much all I wanted to do is just ride horses and yeah, finally get to do it in a big way. <laughs> uh, how old were you when you first got into the sport? 15. And uh, who introduced you to relay racing? Uh, my mom and my stepdad, I guess. And yeah, I've just seen a lot of older people that I race now, like Narciss. Yeah, kind of inspired me. And my son was about 14, 15, and he kept telling me he wanted to ride, but, you know, things change, and I didn't know if that was really going to come true, but it was a dream of mine <laughs> that he would ride, and, and here it is today. How proud are you to see I'm him? I'm so like proud, him. I'm so proud. I'm like the proudest ever. <laughs> I can't even explain how proud I am. My grandson is Isaiah Crossguns. Um, I come a long ways with the rest of my family and over 1,200 miles to be with him. And that's the most important thing right now is to support my boy. Every time I'm with him, I break down. My heart is beating faster and faster, especially when he's running in the crowd and he gets off and he makes me pretty happy. You don't travel without family. You don't see anybody here that's not traveling with family. You see kids from infants being pushed in a uh, carriage to granddaughters that travel with grandma and grandpa yet. So family is a big part of uh, Indian Relay. It, yeah. <laughs> it makes it fun. If you didn't have family, it wouldn't be as fun. Yes, the, the sport is really family oriented. You know, everybody pitches in for the training. And then when we, it's kind of like the old old times when the camps would move to, they, their families would move with them too. It's kind of like the way Indian Relay because everybody pitches in to help, to support, um, you know, making the, the, the outfits for the, um, the riders and stuff. Some of the, the outfits and the designs go, have, go way back because some of the designs, the traditional um, designs in the different tribes from the Crow, the Northern Cheyenne, the Blackfeet, you know, the Fort Hall, a lot of those um, designs are, are some of their family designs that are passed on and their colors and, you know, different colors, um, those are, are what signify our, our makeup, some of their outfits. And then we have the contemporary ones, you know, some of the contemporary ones, because what Indian Relay has transitioned into now is a contemporary plus culture. And what the cultural part of it is, is it enables it, we're recognized by our, our culture and that gives each tribe their identity and how they practice their, you know, their beliefs and um, their history. A lot of pride comes into the racing. Um, but the, the family part of it, you know, they come and they camp and, you know, it, in the old days, um, in the lodges when, when we used to, to live, the, a lot of the Plains tribe, after the, after the winter was over, the spring came, the new life, you'd see the leaves, the grass coming up, and the bands all came together for our area 
The first thunder was the, was the calling together of the tribes. And when they would come together, that would be, um, they would see the new life, the infants, the elders, how the elders fared, and you know, meet their old friends and, and, and see how everybody did through the winter. It was a time of celebration, um, time to get together again and celebrate. We got a traditional mountain start, and that's the way Arrow Lake started early yesterday. Here is Grizzly Mountain. There is Carlson, two tones. Grizzly Mountain, two tone. Little Badger rides the pretty horse. Grizzly Mountain in fourth, and Arrow Lakes on following up on the backside as they go as they change position. It is Little Badger taking the lead now, and Wes Edwards follow, overtakes Carlson. That's Chaz Racine. And, Rides the pretty horse from the Great Crow Nation. One, two, three, that's what it looks like now, folks, coming into the backstretch for their first exchange. That's Grizzly Mountain in four, followed by two tones. That's here where they come on their first exchange as they look to make the smooth transi transition. Who's it gonna be up first on the track? We have three teams. We have Little Badger Boys, Carlson, and Grizzly Mountain, two tones. And here comes Arrow Lake as it appears they are all off and running. We have six horses running as they come around the first turn to come in front of you for the first time. Here is Carlson followed by Little Badger as the Blackfeet Nation is out in the lane here as down the stretch they come for the exchange in front of the grandstands. You get a great look at Chaz Racine and Wes Edwards as they come. Here comes Two Tone and John Mark Skunkcap not to be outdone. Grizzly Mountain is right in there as they come in. Your top four teams rides the pretty horse as well, followed by Arrow Lakes. And watch this transition, folks, as we try to get this going. Who's it gonna be? It appears to be John Mark Stumpcap. Little Badger is off and running. Two tones and Grizzly Mountain. That's one, two, three, folks, and rides the pretty horse from the great TP capital of the world. And now goes Chaz Racine and Carlson as we make that first turn. It is Little Badger followed by Showban. That is John Mark Grizzly Mountain in third, followed by rides the pretty horse. As they come into view now, that is Little Badger, followed by Two Tones, Grizzly Mountain, as they start to gear down and pour it on for their final exchange. There is Rides the Pretty Horse from Crow Nation, and Carlson coming to view now. We are waiting on Arrow Lakes as they get set to make it. That is Little Badger, boys. That makes a transition. John Mark, not yet to be outdone, is in second, and he's running hard, looking to catch number one position of Little Badger. That is Wes Edwards filling on, but here comes Grizzly Mountain in third as they try to make a move, and looks like they're gaining on two tones as they make the TP turn, as they get ready to come for home. We're looking at Little Badger and Wes Edwards as they come for home. This is Wes Edwards of Little Badger making a move and Grizzly Mountain overtakes two tones as they come down the stretch to finish heat number one. It appears to be Wes Edwards and the Little Badger boys hanging on is gonna be that team from the Columbia River Basin. Grizzly Mountain and John Mark Skunkcap from Showman from Fort Hall coming in is Carlson and rides the pretty horse for our warriors out there on their hunting camps, our warfare. And there you hear the gun getting out to a good start is Blanket Bull followed by Umatella Express. On the inside is Omak Express and there is Abrahamson and Kobe Relay on the rear as they make the first turn. There's Tyler Peasley on the inside. That is Omak Express as he now takes the lead, followed by Blanket Bull in second. Awasapsi and Express and Robert Bull is challenging for second, and he now comes into second on the back stretch as they start to make their first exchange. On the back stretch as they start to gear down. Once again, it is Tyler Peasley getting out to a great start here on heat number two of Omak Express. And there you have it, there's Tyler Peasley and Umatella with the Kobe team. Omak Express, Umatilla, Abrahamson, Blanket Bull, and Kobe Relay as our teams look to get on 
There gets Omac Express as they are off, and Tyler Peasley is gunning for first place as he is off and running hard. Once again, inside the game is Blanket Bull, Kobe Relay, Awasopsi Express, Umatella Express, and Blanket Bull as we look at Tyler Peasley coming down the down the stretch for his second exchange. Here we come into view now. That is Abraham or Kobe Relay, Abraham Sin, Awasopsi, Omac. Blanket Bull, Umatella Express as they come in for the exchange in front of the grandstands. It's Tyler Peasley that has a smooth transition and that's where it is won and lost right there. And you get a good look at that transition. That's Tyler Peasley and Awasopsi Express and Robert Bull is running hard after Omak Express, that's Kobe and Abrahamson and Blanket Bull. Umatilla now off and Blanket Bull. So Tyler Peasley with a commanding lead followed by Awasopsi Express. Not behind or in third is Kobe Relay and Abrahamson. Umatilla Express in third or fourth. Their fourth horse coming up, Tyler Peasley. Starts to gear down followed by Awasopsi. As they come into my view now, that is Awasopsi. Kobe Relay still hanging on, followed by Abrahamson, Umatella Express, and Blanket Bull. And you see Omac Express is off and running hard. This is, this looks like Omac Express the way they usually do. He's brought his A game today as they round the TP turn. One of the top riders in the Columbia River Basin and Tyler Peasley with Omac Express, Awasopsi Express is coming on and this is Abrahamson in third. Followed by, or that is Kobe Rock Roads and Tyler Peasley is gonna breeze in as we come for our champion in heat number two from the Colville Nation, Omac Express in the camel. Coming down the stretch, it is Abrahamson gonna come in for second, followed by Awasopsi Express. That's Abrahamson, Awasopsi Express, Blankable, Umatella, and Kobe Relay. As they have to be behind the line, there's the gun as they go off. Showband, there is Marshan, Narciss Rivas on the inside. Here comes Isaiah Crossguns starting, starting a strong move. That is Star School on the inside with Marshan Real Life, Bikani Express, Teton, Star School, Mountain River. Teton is stuck here in the front and now gets going now. Teton, as we look at Star School, Bikani Express, that is Star School and Isaiah Crossguns and Narciss Rivas as you look at the veteran and the up and comer as they are on the big screen and before you looking to make the first exchange. So that is Star School. Also we have Tetons that got going late and they are coming around the second turn. You look at them coming in, gearing down on the sec their first exchange. It appears to be Star School, Bikini Express. Star School is on their horse and running, followed by Marshad. Big Honey Express as Narciss Rivas makes a smooth exchange, but look at Star School in second, followed by Marshan Relay in third as they make that third turn. As they come around, here is a brilliant display of Narciss Rivas and Picani Express on the big screen. But look at Isaiah Crosskins and Star School looking to make a move on that final turn, giving him a run for his money on the TP turn as they come down in front of the grandstand. Here is Marshan coming up in third. Old Elk from the Great Crow Nation in fourth as they come for their second exchange in front of the grandstand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where it is won and lost. The smooth transition, both feet have to touch the ground and they are off as Narciss Rivas gets off and on his horse and he is off and running hard, but Nor Star School is not yet to be outdone, followed by Marsh and Relay and Old Elk. Ladies and gentlemen, we got four horses running out and Mountain River running hard. Narciss Rivas and Star School is right behind, running hard behind them, Marshan. And Old Elk, Teton, 
is trying to make that exchange as we have a loose horse on the track now. Loose horse on the track and Narcissus Rebus from Picani Express is still in the lead, followed by Star School and Marshan Relay in third and Old Elk in fourth. We have a loose horse on the track as they got start to stretch out on the back stretch. Narcissus Rebus still leading as they come for their final exchange. Narcissus Rebus and Star School, that's Marshan Relay, followed by Old Elk, the top four teams. Making the transition is young Isaiah Crossgun as he makes a move for first place as he comes around the third turn. That is the veteran that is getting challenged by the young guy, Isaiah Crossguns, as they take the third turn. Narcissus Remus, not yet to be outdone, comes on, the, but here comes Isaiah Crossguns in Star School, making the final turn on the TP turn, and has yet to come for home. Narcissus Remus, because is in second. Every one of us has to, you know, develop a, a bond to these horses, even down to the holders. They have to trust you. If they don't trust you, then they're going to be nervous and they're going to do what you, what you ask of them when it comes time. Um, when you develop that bond, um, they're going to do anything they want. They're going to go to the end with you, so. You got to have a, a real special bond. If um, you're nervous, they, they feel it. But, you know, luckily I don't have to handle them. My, one of my exchange holders, they're pretty OK, you know, they, they, if they're nervous, then, you know, the horses, if the horses will go in the air, you know, turn, won't stand, but, you know, other than that, you know, it's, it's like, you can almost feel, if you're good, then, then they're good. You're handling a 1,200 pound horse that can just take you out at any time, and he's doing what you want to do. It's almost spiritual, in a way, to be, to, to be part of that with a horse. So you're like becoming bonded together. And they, you know, you, you take them to places and they're your kids. So you love them just like you would your normal kids. And um, if you can maintain them really well, they will be good to you. I work to support my horses. I don't make a lot of money at this, but I make enough to, to do it. It's the love of the game that makes me do this. The adrenaline rush of six teams out on the track, uh, getting ready to everybody competing. And it's a sport that I can be involved in instead of sitting there watching from a grandstand. It's where, at my age now, that I can be part of something that can be great. Well, the, the history and the culture, you know, goes back, way back over 500 years, you know, from when the horses first came and what, the 1600s from the south, the Spaniards, it, um, you know, some of the loose horses when the Spaniards left, you know, they got loose um, in North America and then, you know, come up, up our way. You know, the Plains tribe you, utilized them a lot. Um, the first days was dog days, what they called it in the um, early 1600s, well, pre-1600s and then, come um, 1600s when the horse came um, and it, it broadened their their land, their land base. It um, enabled them to hunt um, better hunters and warfare it strengthened them, the horse did. You know, before that, they used the dog for for a lot of things. You know, they would, um, the dogs were their packers. They would um, tie small trav voices to the dogs or just a lot of things they depended on them. When the Blackfeet first encountered the horse, um, it was big as an, an, an elk, and an elk, how you say, um, elk in our language is bonoka, and that is elk. And um, when they encountered the horse, it was mystifying to, to the Blackfeet. When they seen it, it was so big, and it was tame. It, it, they couldn't believe how, how big it was, how massive and how tame it was. And um, they likened the tameness to the dog, and so, 
Um, when they when they put the name together, it's two names in one. What they call it, Ponoka is El, Imita is dog, and so Ponokamita. And so the horse to the Blackfeet is Ponokamita, elk dog. And so that's that's how the Blackfeet translates the, the horse to to our language. As our warriors ride in for battle for the traditional hunt, and there's the gun is Arrow Lake and Kobe, followed by Marshawn. There is Teton in fourth. And it appears to be Mountain River, followed up by Umatella Express as they make their way around the first turn in the blanket pull. Here comes Kobe in third, and making a move is Arrow Lakes. Uh, they are in third. In the black and purple is Mountain River in fourth. As they fan out on the other side, that is Arrow Lakes, Kobe Relay, and Umatella Express. As they run four horses here, four lengths apart. Now five, here comes Teton making a move here as they come for their first exchange. As they start to gear down, you see all, you see five horses, now six on the big screen. Again, that's Mountain River, Blanket Bull, Umatella Express, Teton, Arrow Lakes, and Kobe Relay. All six teams still in the running for their first exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where it is won and lost. The smooth transition, if they can get out of there, they are going to do well. Here comes John Mark Skunk Cab. It appears to be no, it is Mountain River out in the lead that made the transition. And he is followed by Tetons from Fort Hall, Idaho. Trailing that is Arrow Lakes and Umatella. Correction, that is Blanket Bull and Ford, Umatella. As they come down, you get a good look at Mountain River in our first consolation race. That is Teton, Blanket Bull, Umatella, and Kobe Relay. Here comes Arrow in six, as we have all six horse teams still in contention here. This is their second transition, as we get a good look at Mountain River, and you see that exchange as Mountain River is off and running. That is Chris Pohl from the Nicola White Clay Nation, followed by Teton. And here comes Kobe Relay, representing Fort Hall in the show bat. Here is Blanket Bull, Yumatella, and Arrow Lakes as they head out. It is Mountain River, Chris, Chris Cole, your leader, well out in front, followed by Teton from the Shogun Nation, and Kobe Relay, one, two, three, and Blanket Bull in fourth, followed by Umatella and Arrow Lakes. All six horses running today, ladies and gentlemen. On the back stretch, it is Kobe, once again, Mountain River, box number one, your draw. Some say the number one is the best, some say number six is the best, but here is Mountain River, proven to be number one draw, is doing it for him, looking to make the transition, but he's not on his horse yet. That makes all the difference on your exchange. So he does it, here he comes. That is Chris Cole from Mountain River, as he is off and running. And this is the first consolation race of Emerald Downs and the Gold Cup, and it is Kobe Relay that is running. In third, it is Teton in second, and Mountain River running in first. So we got Mountain River. Kobe and Teton and Umatella and Blanket Bull. So here comes Naco Mountain River, the Nakota White Clay Nation, and Chris Cole is gonna come away with your first consolation win. And here is Mias Teton from the Shoban Nation, followed up by Kobe Relay, also from Fort Hall. The Shoban Nation, followed by Blanket Bull. Umatella Express and Arrow Lakes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first consolation of the race of the Muckleshoot Gold Cup here on Sunday. How did you like that?
and there's the gun as we start out John Mark Skunkcap on the inside rail Narciss Rivas right there and OMAC Express your top three there's rides the pretty horse along with Abraham Sin and Oldell two tones as they make the inside rail that is Narciss Rivas and those two talented riders go head to head matching up who's challenging who that's Picani Express Narciss Rivas and OMAC Express Tyler Peasley followed by Fort Hall John Mark Skunkcap coming up strong is Abrahamson as they make a move for third. Rides the pretty horses right there as well. And look at that. That is old out as we have all our teams into view now. Folks, this gets better. Watch this exchange. These guys practice that all the time. We're looking at veteran riders right here as they go for their first exchange. Who's it gonna be? Who's gonna get on their horse first? Two feet must touch the ground as they make the exchange. They are gonna be off. Two feet touch the ground as we see the riders start to come out. As Narciss Rivas, the ultimate warrior, makes the exchange and he is out in out in the lead, followed by OMAC Express. That's Tyler Peasley right there, not yet to be outdone. Here comes Abrahamson making a move on the third turn. As they come around, fourth is two-tone. That is John Mark Skunkcap. As we have all horses on the running, as they get set to come down the stretch. It is Abrahamson starting to make a move on that sack second exchange. As you get a view of five of the teams running, Bikini Express is still in the lead watch this exchange ladies and gentlemen again we have coming in second that's abrahamson john mark skunkcap rides the pretty horse omac express and old elf and watch narciss raises look at that exchange folks here come abrahamson john mark skunkcap two-tone abrahamson in second two tones in third rides a pretty horse and here comes omac express coming up as they make the first turn Old Elk is still trying to get on, and they are off and running now. But look at that, folks. That is Narciss Rivas in the lead, followed by Abrahamson looking to make a move in two-tone in third. We have Omak Express and rides the pretty horse. Old Elk is coming up in six as they hit the back stretch there. Look at that display, folks. Bikini Express, Narciss Rivas, and Abrahamson from the Colville Nation. Scotty Abrahamson, your rider as we get set to make their final exchange and take it home. Who's gonna be the champion of this prime time consolation race of the Muckleshoot Gold Cup here at Emerald Downs? Ladies and gentlemen, your final exchange in the consolation race. Who's it gonna be? This is Two-Tone in third and OMAC Express in fourth. As we have a loose horse and rides the pretty horse. That is Old Elk in six. We have a loose horse on the track. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. It is Scott Abrahamson, Narciss Rivas, Picani Express, Abrahamson, Picani Express. Who's it gonna be? It is Picani Express and Abrahamson looking to make a move. Scotty Abrahamson and Narciss Rivas as they come in. Look at this. This is John Mark Skunkcap along with Rods the Pretty Horse from the Great Crow Nation and Omak Express from the Columbia River Basin. <laughs> What I love about Indian relay racing, I guess it's just how intense it is, you know, that adrenaline rush, I guess you could say. It's just all about that, you know. Well, when you get into Indian relay, man, it just kind of, it just kind of turns into relay's life, you know, that's what you like doing, man, you're gonna do it your whole life, you know. And your whole family has your back because they want to see you do good out there. And 
pretty amazing when it's a family effort, man, and everybody's trying their best, and your horses are gonna do really good, you know? It's like something that pulls the family together, because when you guys team up, it's more like you come together like a family, you travel together, you hang out together, you're with each other every day. And there's a lot of, a lot of communication, it's like brother, brotherly love, and getting mad at each other, being happy together, you know? and talking things over and helping each other out when we're down and out. Pride, the camaraderie, the community, it's uh, built into our history, so we uh, really enjoy that. We want to represent our communities, our towns, our people, our horses. Be around horses, we all love horses, and I don't know what we'd be doing. We'd be some crazy guys if we didn't have our horses or something, probably, you know. It just gives us something to do every day, and it's some good, good, solid fun. Family trumps everything in my books. After I think about it, nah, family. It's all about family. As long as they're living life, having fun, enjoying themselves, I'm good. I'm happy. You know? But winning, it's always right there. And it's, you know, within seconds, and sometimes anything can happen out there. That's the thing, you know. But you live with what you got and enjoy life. Pride is on the line for a lot of these teams, and any one of them could be a champion here um, to walk away with the championship. My hopes and dreams for Indian Relay's future is, is something like this, what the Muckle Shoot had, had um, proposed to do and are doing it. And what we are doing is showcasing their talent, their culture, and um, you know, a lot of their pride is, is on the line for them because they want to put the best show, plus they want to win, but they want to put their best effort for, you know, the fans, their family, for their tribe. They want to do the best they can. And so, you know, just showcasing all of that and, and not limiting them on, you know, where they can go or what they can do, but just giving them the best opportunity to compete. for a treat. Top teams that had a great weekend here at Emerald Downs, and I'm ready to relay as we come to the starting line. And look at this, there's the gut. It is Grizzly Mullen, Carlson, Little Badger, Awasapsi Express, Star School, and in the green is Marchand Relay, as they are all bunched up on the first one. Who's gonna yell first? It is Little Badger taking the lead, followed by Carlson, Grizzly Mountain, Awasapsi, Star School, and Marshat Relay. Look at this, folks, I love it. Six teams, you can see them all. This is an awesome race. Little Badger is still in the lead. 
Grizzly Mountain now challenges. There is Carlson in third. Here comes Isaiah Crossguns coming up for fourth as they come for their first exchange. You're looking at Little Badger, Grizzly Mountain, Star School, and Carlson. Grizzly Mountain is make, trying to make the exchange. He falls off. There is Isaiah Al Alisopsi Express who makes a trip to exchange and they are off and running followed by Carlson. Little Badger in third, Star School fourth, Grizzly Mountain in fifth. As Marshan is following Little Badger, here is Alisopsi Express as they make that fourth turn and down the stretch they come for their second exchange here in front of the grandstands. Look at this, Topsy Express, Little Badger, Carlson, Marshan, Star School, and Grizzly Mountain. All six teams still in contention of this championship race. Who is it gonna be? The Gold Top winner of 2016. Watch this exchange, ladies and gentlemen. There is Chaz Racine, but there is Alisopsi Express and Robert Gray. Marshan is running right there. Carlson, Little Badger, Grizzly Mountain, and Star School. So it is out. Alisopsi Express in the lead, followed by Carlson, Marshan, Little Badger, Grizzly Mountain, and Star School. As all six teams don't want to give up as they are running hard around the second turn. As you look at Mount Rainier as Star School goes past, it is still Alisopsi Express and Carlson. Marshan is starting to move. Little Badger is right there and Grizzly Mountain. And here comes Isaiah Crossguns. Carlson is now making a move before the exchange as Alisopsi now drops to second. There's Marshan right there looking to make that final exchange on the back stretch. As Little Badger comes into Vill Grizzly Mountain and Star School. Their final exchange, folks, let's hear it. What do you think about this? Here comes Alisopsi. Folks, who's it gonna be? Carlson is out in the front. That is Jazz Racine, followed by Grizzly Mountain. Little Badger, as they are gonna be battling Marshan. Alisopsi Express and Star School. Jazz Racine is in the lead, followed by Grizzly Mountain, and Little Badger is right there. This is our second year up here, and we're already talking about coming back next year. I mean, it's a, a great venue, a beautiful location, and, and it's a lot of fun to come up here. This is like the big show, you know. Really a great feeling just being here. Just being able to show up and represent our tribe and our team. This kind of sport is amazing, and I, I thank the Muckleshoots for everything they're doing here, and I really appreciate them. I just, I want to thank Emerald Downs. I want to thank the people here. I'd like to thank the Muckleshoot Tribe for making it possible. I think it's a good thing that they're doing. I just again would like to thank them. Favorite part about racing is just being here and doing it, because it's kind of our tradition nowadays, as being, you know, tribes throughout America, and us from the north, and now all these people from the West get into it, you know, it was tradition is what it is, and that's probably the best part of it, family, and getting the, the big thrill of doing it, you know, it's a pretty exciting sport. I like everything about it. <laughs>